So I learned a thing today why flamingos sleep with one leg tucked up underneath them. It's because if they tucked up the other one too, they'd fall. <laughs> God, I love bad jokes. I live on bad jokes. They're like my lifeblood. Good evening, I am Raina, your friendly neighborhood witch of what the f and I am a little obsessed with hot pink. So one of my friends has nicknamed me the Gothic Rainbow Bright, which I kind of really dig because I'm a little bit gothic. But I also really, really love rainbow colors and fluorescence and tropical stuff. So best of both worlds, right? Dark and creepy and uh, tropical. I got these pillows at Michael's. I like them and I've been staring at them and I got the idea to do a flip cup to kind of mimic this one with the flowers and a purdy. Here is what I came up with. I call it a flamingo goes to Jupiter. Indeed. Now I'm gonna be real honest with you. I am not great at flip cups. I'm good at blooms, I'm good at swipes, I'm good at a lot of these things, but flip cups, which is probably the easiest of all of them, is the one I kinda suck at. I have done, to date, one, <laughs> one out of several hundred, one flip cup that I liked, and it is a tile. And you know what, I didn't even film it. Here it is. <laughs> Isn't it pretty? Hey, one of these days I'll get like a polarizing lens or something from my camera so you don't catch the glare, but yeah, this is the one successful flip cup I've done. <laughs> so as I film this, I think I might have a fever. Ooh, an orb. Ooh, an orb. That was kind of cool. I have an orb in my room. I am a little delirious. I am sick as a dog. I think I have Lyme disease and uh, I should be like a flamingo and put my foot down and take a week off of this, but I'm a workaholic too, so I'm just gonna roll with it. I'm gonna roll with it. I am wearing lipstick on my eyelids. Delirious. It's great. It's great fun. Great fun. Yes. Let's go. I'm trying a bit of an experiment today. I have a pillow, which I have shown in the intro, that I'm trying to mimic with a flip cup, but I'm using Shelly Art Bloom Recipes. I'll go through these paints quick. This is a mixture of Master's Touch Fluorescent Green and uh, Amsterdam Reflex Green, and it's mixed in a ratio that is one to one untinted base paint three. Now this is the extra thick stuff, so you may have to do a two to one. And then the other is polycrylic. This is Arteza Sea Green, 20 milligrams of the pouring medium to 10 milligrams of paint. Same here, this is Arteza Turquoise. Excuse the movement of the camera, I am holding it in my hand. This yellow is Amsterdam Reflex Yellow. Actually, strike that, it's Master's Touch Fluorescent Yellow. This is a custom orange that I made out of some gold. I added some fluorescent yellow and orange to that. I can't even tell you what's in it, so, you know. This is Arteza Amaranth Red. It's kind of like a nice coral color. This is Amsterdam White. And this paint is pretty thick, so I initially did a two to one ratio, but I ended up having to do a three to one to make it run like warm honey. Hot Pink by da Daily Rauner, maybe? I'm not sure. And Arteza Hot Pink, and yeah, pretty different pinks there, right? So again, I'll show you with this one. The consistency you're wanting to go for is like warm honey. It should just drip off the stick and then disappear within a second or two. And that's when you know you've got a good consistency. It feels thick, but it's gonna work real nice. So, let's see how these all work together in a flip cup, shall we? I'm gonna mix this on camera today. I'm starting with the cell activator. This is Australian Flotrol and white Amsterdam paint. Now, the original dose of Floetrol I got was all separated. Uh, in fact, let me kind of show you if you can see that, where it's like water and then the white stuff. And I'm not sure that it was shaken properly before it was distributed and sent to me. The stuff 
it doesn't work as great as I was expecting by any way, shape, or means. So I'm going to use this as a flip cup. And I'm going to first coat the bottom of my three ounce cup. And then I'm going to put that on the very top when I'm done. So I am going in order here. I have a pink, kind of a yellow orange, and then a blue green line that I want to do here. And I'm going to start with the deeper value on each and then the lighter value. And I'm going to pour kind of healthy here down the side of the cup so the colors don't completely blend into each other but just neatly lay on top of each other. And then I'm going to put the white, not the cell activator, just the normal white in between each of these three layers because I am trying to mimic that pillow, sort of. <laughs> Now I'm doing my coral, orange gold, and my fluorescent yellow. I said these are relatively healthy pores here. Oh crud, which is which? Oh, the thin stuff is my cell activator. <laughs> I put them right next to each other. That was not smart. Okay, white again. I'm going to really make these layers separate to get the effect I'm going for. And I'm going to do the turquoise. I'm not going to use as much of this because there's not all that much blue in the pillow, um, even though it's clearly my favorite color. I'm going to use a bit more of the sea green. Ooh. And then a big old drop of fluorescent green. And do the white again. So what I think I'm going to end up here with is two repeats of the pattern. So again, I'm going to start with my Arteza Hot Pink, which is definitely more of a magenta. <laughs> Get messy. My awesome favorite hot pink that I use constantly. Another big, thick dollop of white. Hopefully made enough. I used Amsterdam White specifically because it kind of has its own cell activating properties. It's just really good paint to use if you want cells, which I do. Okay. Cool. Orange. Fluorescent yellow. More white. Kind of low. I mean, let's mix some more of that. Blue. Again, not as much. Turquoise. I'm sorry, sea green, which to me is far more turquoise, and the other one is far more blue, but hey, I constantly argue silently with companies about their choices of the names of their colors because I think they're wrong, but you know, that's me. And I don't work at a paint company. I probably should. You know, I think I actually have enough room here for one more layer. <laughs> no. I'm gonna have to mix some more white for sure. I'm gonna do that really quick. I know this is backwards, sorry. I'm gonna hit tear so it takes it to zero. I'm gonna do 25. No, actually, I'm sorry, 20. And five. There we go. This last little drop in there. And mix it up. Okay, where was I? Back at the beginning. It's a little harder when you are doing it with two hands and not just pouring so you've got everything at a nice angle. This, of course, will be at the bottom, so hopefully it'll be a little less noticeable if any of the colors mud together. I'm gonna put a big healthy dose of white on this. Fun fact, in 1979, Madison, Wisconsin, also known as Moscow East or Madtown, and the capital of my bipolar home state, declared the city's official bird to be the pink plastic flamingo. I'm going to crown it with the normal white, so you can see that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cell activator and I'm going to cover this. That's good enough. I'm going to set this aside for just a moment. Got my canvas. I uh, wet it down, taped the back, and dated it. All best practices, kids because then you know when you painted it and then you know you can varnish it after you know three weeks to a month. I'm gonna put a thin layer of pillow paint, but this is not typical pillow paint. This is actual pouring medium. Gloppy, as you can tell. This is transparent, just smooth it over. So the flip cup has a lot of paint on which to flow. 
because dry edges aren't so fun. You need, in painting, like in many other things in life, you know, cars, heavy machinery, lubrication. It's important. You want your paint to glide. You don't want it to get stuck on the canvas. And I'm just gonna let that sit there for a moment. I'm gonna cap my paints, so I'll be back. Another fun fact, adult flamingos stand between four to five feet tall and weigh between four to eight pounds. That's 1.8 to 3.6 kilograms for you non-imperialists. Okay, let's see what happens. If that same adult flamingo were on Jupiter, it would weigh a whopping 9.5 to 19 pounds or 4.3 to 8.6 kilos to the rest of you. It would also be dead. The only person to ever visit Jupiter is Elon Musk's ego. Speaking of gaseous giants, here's me again. I think this might be very interesting. <laughs> Why am I torching? That is a good question. I am torching because there's all these little air bubbles here and the heat brings more bubbles to the surface, a chemical reaction, and the bubbles will create cells. So with a flip cup, you want that. I'm gonna let it develop for a few minutes. So you've gotta be patient with these and let them do what they're gonna do. They're gonna have their own personality uh, and it's best to be patient as difficult as that can be sometimes. Oh, cat hair, imagine that. I don't even, my cat's not even in here. I don't know how this happens. I just needed to break that up a little bit for my own satisfaction. And here's the difficult part. I'm gonna walk away for about 10 minutes. I'm bleeding. I picked a bug bite. It was probably, you know, the tick bite. Um, anyway, blood, uh, that is its own unique fluid painting medium. We're not gonna do that tonight or ever. So with the whole pandemic thing, I've been home and my husband's been home and we've been arguing and he says to me, Raina, you are being so flamboyant. Stop being a flamingo. And I said, I'm putting my foot down. <laughs> God, I love bad jokes. If I were a vampire, my, it'd be bad jokes. Dad jokes, bad jokes. Ooh, all of them, I love them. I live on them. Give me more, give me all your bad jokes. And we're back. So that's what happened in 10 minutes. Uh, sorry for the black gloves. I feel like they're really ruining my aesthetic here, but since it's pandemic season, all the blue gloves were bought. So all I've got is black, which is normally a cool thing, but it does not go with my neon paint here. So, you know, bear with me, black gloves and all. At least I'm wearing gloves. So let's, let's see where this goes. There's not a ton of cells. There's some right here, if you can see that, and some right there, they're really beautiful. This section in particular is pretty, but we're just gonna find out. Try it from the silicone mat on which it resides. And I'm just gonna start. Hmm, what to do, what to do. Some people have like amazing success with flip cups. I really am not one of them, but it doesn't stop me from trying to get it right. I did one really, really good one once on a tile. And of course I didn't film it that day, but I did use the Shelly Art Bloom recipe. That's what inspired me to try this today because I don't want to suck at flip cups. I don't. Who does? I mean, that it's like, the most simple of all of the methods. Why do I suck at the simple one? It's just, you know, me. So, okay, I'm gonna try to clamp this yellow on because I like it. Lose a little bit of this orange, but I don't want to lose the yellow green. Kind of pretty. Hmm. Hmm. 
I don't hate it. I'm gonna drag the paint down the sides here in a few places. Because what I do hate is unpainted sides. Well, here it is. Here is the dried painting. It's pretty. I like it. An interesting thing is that all of the Arteza paints sunk to the bottom underneath all of the neon colors. I wasn't expecting that at all. I thought that they would play just as prominently, but I guess they're just thicker than everything else. So, hey, you live and you learn. I still like it. There's definitely paint all over my carpet. Shit. Such is life, such is crazy. Such is being the witch of what the duck. And that's why I call myself that, because that's what I do. I'm nuts, in a good way. You know, like, I don't hurt people. It's just, I'm crazy, in a good way. Yeah, have fun.